So hello guys, uh, this is Dr. Edwards again, and uh, my intent here is to give some pointers on the modular two um, exercise questions as they exist right now. So this is uh, chapter three, uh, some of the exercise questions in chapter three. All right, so firstly, you see on the screen now <coughs> is problem one. A person holds a 10 kilogram package, 1.2 meters above the floor for one minute. How much work is done? Okay, so firstly then, recall the equation for work. Work is equal to the force in magnitude in a given direction times the distance that it moves while being observed. So work then, capital W is equal to F times D. So it doesn't matter how large the F is, or the force measuring Newtons, but you must have both quantities in order to have some work. So in this case, D is zero in this problem. D is zero. Therefore, the work is equal to whatever F is times zero, and the total work then is equal to zero since the package does not move. All right, so that takes care of that problem. The package doesn't move, although there's a force on it, the work is by definition zero. Check out this problem. A total of 490 joules of work is needed to lift a mass of unknown mass through a height of 10 meters. You're lifting it against the gravitational force. What is its mass? Okay, so let's represent that by m. Uh, the acceleration due to gravity is 9.80 meters per second squared. It's a known number here at sea level. And the work total for this problem is 490 joules. The height is 10 meters. So we write out the formula. Work is, is equal to f times the distance, h in this case, and mg times h. Now, I want to move um, uh, GH to the other side of the equation. So you use the multiplicative inverse. The multiplicative inverse of G times H is 1 over G times H. So you multiply 1 over G times H times the left-hand side and times the right-hand side. And you see it's going to cancel on the right-hand right side and effectively moves it into the denominator properly on the left-hand side, which is what should, should be the case. Let me move it up. So then you put in the numbers here. The mass then is 490 joules divided by 9.80 meters per second squared times 10 meters, blah, blah, blah. And you get 490 joules, 98.0 meters per second squared. The mass, the numbers give you a five. The units then a joule per meter squared per second squared is effectively a kilogram meter squared second squared meter squared second squared they all cancel leave just a kilogram so the mass in this case is five kilogram check out this problem so this is problem 18 in chapter three once again what is the speed of a 800 kilogram car whose kinetic energy is 250 kilojoules so kinetic energy Ke is 250 joules in this case, meaning that the kinetic energy is known. So obviously there's going to be something else unknown uh, about this system. The mass is equal to 80 kilograms. Therefore, the kinetic energy Ke is one half mv squared. Now we want to isolate v squared. How to isolate v squared? Use the multiplicative inverse of m over 2, which is 2 over m. That's the multiplicative inverse. So you multiply that through, and you see nicely, having chosen 2 over m, it cancels on the right-hand side, leaving just v squared. Now you take the square of both sides of the equation, and you get then that v squared is the square root of 2 over m times the quantity k times e. And so now we go on here, we put in the numbers. V then is equal to the square root of 2 times 250 kilojoules 
divided by 800 kilograms, that's, that's 250 divided by 400 kilojoules per kilogram. A kilo is 10, is, uh, 10 to the third or 1,000. So we put that in, multiply 0 0.0025 times 1,000 gives us 2.5. A kilojoule divided, uh, I'm sorry, a joule divided by a kilogram, as shown here, is effectively a meter squared per second squared. We put in the units and we take the square root, we get 1.58 meters per second squared. Meters per second, I'm sorry. All right, that takes care of that problem. Now comes this problem, number 52. And in this problem, a boy throws a four kilogram pumpkin at eight meters per second to a 40 kilogram girl on roller skates. That's necessary. Who catches it? The girl catches the pumpkin. At what speed does the girl then move backward? That's the question. Now this problem is a conservation law of momentum problem of two interacting bodies. And if the external force on these two bodies is zero, the momentum before the collision is equal to the momentum after the collision. That's a condition that we worked out with application of Newton's second law in the presence of no external forces. And the fact that she has on roller skates puts her in that situation of no external forces horizontally uh, when she catches this pumpkin. So the collision in this case is a coupling phenomenon. She, the collision is when she catch, is her, the girl catching the ball. So I create some units here so that we can use any units, I'm, I'm sorry, any symbols we wish. So I choose to use MP for the mass of the pumpkin. That's four kilograms. MP1 is the, oh, and no, this is wrong. I'm talking about catching the ball, but really catching the pumpkin. So change this word to pumpkin, okay. But back to the problem then. So the mass of the, the, the speed of the pumpkin initially is eight meters per second. That's given. The mass of the girl continuously is four kilograms. The speed of the girl initial, one subscript represent initially here. So the girl initial speed is zero meters per second. She's at rest. Now And now the final speed of the pumpkin, which is the same as the girl finally, uh, two represents finally. So the speed of the uh, girl finally, the speed of the uh, pumpkin finally. They are going to be the same. The speed of the, 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 the pumpkin finally, speed of the girl finally equal to V because she catch the pumpkin and if she and the pumpkin move together in a couple collision. So we write down the equation. The total momentum before the collision is equal to the total momentum after the collision. So blah, blah, blah. After the collision, they're moving at one constant speed. So I factor out the mass of the pumpkin plus the mass of the girl. And then we have this equation. We use the multiplicative inverse and that effectively puts the mass of the pumpkin plus the mass of the girl on the uh, other side of the equation. So finally we get that the common speed is mass of the pumpkin, the initial speed of the pumpkin, mass of the girl, put the initial speed of the girl, divided by the sum of the two masses. We put in the numbers for kilogram times eight meter per second plus zero equals 32 kilogram meter per second divided by the sum of the masses, 42 gram, I'm sorry, 42 kilograms, and we get 0 0.72 meters per second round off. Uh, the girl and the pumpkin are, are, are a coupled collision process and they both move off at the same speed. Okay, this effectively completes the, the um, part of the homework that I had given, but I'm adding one additional problem and I'm going to give extra credit to students who uh, go on and do this problem. One called this problem often occurs on my examination and I wanna make sure that 
we talk about it at some length. But this problem is in the multiple choice question, it's number 32. But we're going to work it out just as we would uh, exercise a problem. A 30 kilogram girl and a 25 kilogram boy are standing on frictionless roller skates. The girl pushes the boy who moves off at 1.0 meters per second speed. So what is the girl's speed after this collision has occurred? So once again, the conservation law of momentum allows us to handle this problem. There's no motion e initially. I'll come to that again in a moment. But I write down the mass of the girl, 30 kilograms. Mass of the boy, 25 kilograms. The initial, oh, I'm sorry, the, the, the final speed of the boy is one meter per second. But now since there's nothing moving initially, we get a zero on the left-hand side. But that's equal to the mass of the boy times the speed of the boy plus mass of the girl times the speed of the girl. We can use the additive inverse and that effectively puts, puts the mass of the boy times the boy's initial or final speed on the left-hand side. Everything cancels on the right-hand side except for mg, vg2. You solve this with the multiplicative inverse as well, and you get that v uh, sub g2 is a negative mb, vb2 over mg. Keep this negative sign here as critical. 25 kilograms times 1 meter per second over 30 kilograms. You go through the math and you get a negative. 0 0.83 meters per second. This, this, this negative sign here is critical, young people. It clearly indicates opposite direction. For the, for the boy is going to travel off, if we say positive is to the right, the boy travels off at one meter per second. The girl who's heavier is going to travel in the negative direction at a slower speed, 0 0.83 meters per second. That's what I want to share with you, young people. Um, get busy, get your homework in, work through these problems many, many times, and get a total understanding of them. Some of them will occur on our examination. Have a good day.